Welcome back to Llama Mama Kayla's Yarn Tube. I'm Kayla. Thanks for stopping by for a visit today. I wanted to tell you guys to grab you a drink, grab you a snack, grab you a project to work on, and let's crochet and chat and just hang out together as friends do and crochet and visit with each other. So um, this video is going to consist of clips throughout a couple of days of just me crocheting and just visiting with you guys because that's what I enjoy doing. So thanks for stopping by. Hey friends, how are you doing today? Welcome back to Llama Mama Kayla's Yarn Tube. I'm Kayla and I'm just sitting outside crocheting a little bit. Um, it is beautiful, beautiful weather here today. The sun is coming in and out behind clouds, so I might get in a little shady spot at times. Um, but that's good for me because I don't need to be out in direct sunlight. So, yeah. Anyway, um, I'm sitting in this little area and I did take a photo of it to just share with you guys um, where I'm sitting and so you can see the little whole thing. Um, several years ago for Mother's Day, my sons, Dakota and Elijah, and built this for me. At that time, I was doing a lot of reborn doll photography and um, they built this little area for me to do that photography, to have a backdrop and a little scene place, you know. And so I was using this whole little area and just setting up little scenes and things for um, you know some photography I was doing and so I enjoyed that and it was just it was the perfect Mother's Day gift for me um, because I didn't need anything you know and this was something that um, I enjoyed and I'm still enjoying it today um, I like to just sit out here sometimes and drink some sweet tea, I have my tea with me, and that cup that Big Daddy gave me. <laughs> so I have my tea, and I can just sit here and crochet. Now in the evening time, and sometimes even during the daytime, mosquitoes are way too bad here in Louisiana. And then, um, and so... Really, this is this little area is short-lived. <laughs> I can use it in the spring. I got hairs in my face. I can use it in the short, short spring that we have. We don't really have spring. We go from winter to summer. <laughs> but it is comfortable today. Um, I think it might be like 70 degrees or something. Tomorrow, we're supposed to have storms. I don't know if that's really going to happen or not. Or, you know, it may hit around us and not on our area. Who knows? But, um, and then in the fall, we have a, we go from summer to our little winter. And not really much of a fall. <laughs> but anyway, I just wanted to sit out here and enjoy this beautiful day. You can see the sun is coming behind clouds and out of behind clouds and stuff and so it does mess up with the picture but you know it's just me I'm sitting here just enjoying it Phoebe is down here um, walking around she's been laying on the bench over here I put her blanket there because uh, I didn't figure she'd lay on the wood but she, I think she got too, a little too hot laying on her blanket. So she decided to lay on the wood. And then she's finally gotten down. But she was laying out here in the sun anyway. And so I just put her blanket up there so she could lay in the sun if she wanted to on her blanket. But now she's just um, walking around. Probably looking for something to get into. <laughs> I have to keep an eye on her. And it's so beautiful today. I am working on a granny square. I'm making another granny square. Granny square. 
um, pullover along with Amanda from Tap Mama 73. We are doing this kind of as a collab, and so um, she has finished one of her panels, and I'm still working on my first panel. I think she started her second panel. I'm still working on my first panel. Um, well, I'll get it done, but I love the way this yarn is working up. It is beautiful. This is the um, Yarn Inspirations Karen Blossom Cakes, and this color way is called Tropical Blooms. And now that the sun is back out, I don't know if you can really see that well, but it is working up. It's pinks and purples and yellows and maybe a hint of some green. I don't know, but I like the way it's working up. Now, in Louisiana, and Tap Mama lives in Louisiana, too. Um, we initially thought we were making summer shirts. Um... I think it's going to be fall shirts <laughs> just because it's way too hot in the summer to be wearing yarn. So I think this is more of a fall shirt. And the, the colors of hers, she is using the McCall colorway. And the colors of mine will be perfect for fall anyway. Both of them um, will just be perfect for fall. So... We're not in any kind of like big hurry to get it done, but I do want to have it done by fall. And so I'm switching up between this project um, and also this project here. Both of these projects I'm using a J hook, which is a six millimeter hook. I'm using that for um, both projects and both projects are just double crochets. Both projects are easy, mindless work. So I don't have to have a pattern. I can just sit and um, watch Phoebe walk around, watch vehicles go down the road, watch the birds and the squirrels, just enjoying the day. Um, something different besides sitting in the house and just getting a little fresh air, but I don't need to be in direct sunlight because of lupus. Um, you, you can't be in the sun. So I'm, you know, shaded a bit, and that's what I need. So I was thinking up some videos that I'm going to be recording this weekend for you guys, and, um, and some future videos and so yeah I've, I've got a lot of ideas coming um i don't want to get ahead of myself and announce them and then somebody else grab my videos up i've had that to happen lots of times <laughs> it's funny you mention you're going to do a video on something and then someone does it like the next day or the next day after that you know um I'm a little bit slower at getting things out and getting things done. Phoebe's decided to lay down in the sun right here. But anyway, um, yeah, I was sitting here just thinking of some future videos um, and places I want to take you guys. And I, I think we're going to have some fun or some things I want to do before it gets too dead blasted hot because... In Louisiana, in the summertime, it's it's too hot to even go to Walmart, okay? <laughs> Used to, uh, when my kids were little, and Walmart was open 24 hours a day before the pandemic. Um, in the summertime, my kids and I would go to Walmart in the middle of the night and do our grocery shopping. There was nobody there. It wasn't hot. Um... It was just a good time for us to go. And then, it, I mean, it was nothing for us to be at Walmart at 2 a.m. Um, and then we homeschooled, so it didn't matter, you know, for us. And then after the pandemic hit and they started closing early, 
that changed <laughs> and then so now I think our Walmart is open till either 10 or 11 I think the little ones close at 10 our big one might close at like 11 so um, we will probably be doing Walmart after dark this summer uh, when it gets so hot that's our plan because it's just my my body with my health conditions I can't take the heat very well at all <laughs> let's be honest I can't take the heat at all it makes me so so sick if I'm out in the heat and it's really hot I will be sick sick so there's a couple places I want to go and things I want to do and see before it gets so hot I think that will be lovely and I want to take you guys along with us baby what is it baby you enjoying the sun some sunshine I like the yarn. I like the way it's working up. It just glides really well on my hook. So that's good. And well, after I go back in, I'll film another clip and show you what my square is actually looking like. But I love the colors in it. I like the way they're coming out. And it does look very fallish to me. So I'm shooting for fall. Because I know good and well my body can't handle this in the summertime I don't even know if I can handle something made out of yarn in the summertime to be honest but I do want to make up some more wearables um, I love that granny square pullover that I made with the black with the um, is it called fruit put no I can't remember what the colorway is called that I did the sleeves in it's going to say fruit punch, but I don't think that's it. Anyway, I love that sweater. I love wearing that sweater. And I did wear it this past Saturday. And I'm, I'm pretty sure that's the last day I'll be able to wear it this go round. I'll have to wait till next fall to wear it again. Um, because I figure our days are just going to start getting warmer and warmer until we can't even stand to wear anything. <laughs> but don't worry, I'll be wearing something. Anyway. This is so nice and relaxing just sitting out here. Wish um, I wish you guys were here with me. This is the next best thing, but... I wish you were here with me so we could actually just all talk, take turns talking, instead of me doing all the talking. That would be nice. I wish I did have crochet friends that live close. I mean, uh, Amanda lives, about, you know, at least two hours away, so, um, you know. That's, I wish I had a neighbor, somebody lives clo really close here that crocheted and would just like to come and sit out here with me, pull up another chair and just crochet and enjoy it. About to finish this round. I don't know what, num what round I'm on. I'll count in just a second. I've got to get this panel to 24 rounds. And then after 24 rounds, I will start the second panel. And it's got to go to 24 rounds also. So I'm going to connect this. Yeah. Slip stitching over here. Slip stitching to connect the round and finish it off. Okay, let me see how many um, rows I have. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. 
So I have what nine more rows. So I'm going to slip stitch on over to my corner and start a new row. Oof, little little bugs are flying around now. So yeah, I just thought I'd sit out here and work on this for a little bit and then maybe change up and work on that blanket some. Um, I did show that blanket to my son Elijah and I do believe he is going to take it from me. <laughs> he wants it trimmed in white, he said. So... I got some of my Premier yarn order in. So I will be doing a Premier yarn haul soon. It's a sweet roll haul. But I'm excited about all those sweet rolls. And I'm going to do different projects with them. They're not all going into the same project. So I'm excited about that. I just want to like just start all those projects. But I have other projects that I'm working on too. You know, I like to change it up. Keep it interesting. I don't want to get boring or bored with my crochet. I thought the home health nurse was going to come today since it's Friday and she hadn't been here all week. But she didn't come, so I don't know. I hadn't heard from her. Um, last week, the RN came and um, flushed my port in my chest. And she will be coming once a month to do that but um of all the home health people that's been here she is the there's a little area that looks like a lake she drives a little bitty car everyone else who has came has parked up on the driveway where it's dirt a solid ground but the RN nurse for some reason decided she wanted to drive through that lake and so I I saw her doing that I, was, I saw her coming up on the camera and she was going to drive through the lake it's not really a lake but you can't see ground all you see is water now why would you drive through that with a little bitty car I don't know so I got up and went to the door and I went like this I went like this trying to tell her to stop and she just kept coming and pulled all the way up um, as close as to my door as she could which would have been okay if she had had a four-wheel drive vehicle right <laughs> but she was in this little bitty car and I'm like, what are you doing? Who just drives where you can't see ground? You know, you don't know how deep that water is. That was her first time to ever come here. And she's the first one to ever attempt to drive through anything like that here. Like I said, everyone else parks over on solid ground where they can see the ground. But anyway... So when she left, she was backing up and she got stuck. And I was just like, she is not spending the day with me. <laughs> I was sleepy. Matter of fact, she, she was running. I had, I had been awake for a very, very long time. Like sometime during the night, probably like at 1 a.m. or something, I had got up. And I had been awake all that time. And then I was waiting on her, and she never came. And then she called and said, I'm running late. And then she said it was going to be about another hour before she came. And I said, look, I cannot hold my eyes open, so I have to go lay down. When you get here, call me, and I'll, you know, wake up and come to the, do come to the door. So... She had called and said she was here, and so I told her, okay, I'm coming. I'll come to the door in just a second. So I had to get up and I had to run potty and then come to the door. But um, 
I thought whenever I saw her get stuck, I thought she is not spending the rest of the day here with me because I'm going back to bed. <laughs> well, she managed to get out of that and she pulled back forward. She pulled back forward and then somehow or another she moved it around and backed up and um, started out forward. Instead of backing up out, she um, had come up in here and backed up and then she was going to go out that way. And she decided to just go out into the middle of the front yard. I'm like, what is she doing? And she got bogged down and she was gunning it. She was giving that little car all it had to get out of that. Mud was flying everywhere. She was in a white car, but she left in a brown car. <laughs> but I was like, who in their right mind pulls through water where you can't even see the bottom? You don't know how deep it is or anything. That just puzzled me. And so I thought, well, they're done with me. She'll go back and tell, you know, like that. And they'll say they don't have to come out here anymore because of the mud and stuff because that has happened before and then i didn't hear from but i didn't hear from the r no the lpn nurse today for her to come so i don't know but you'd think they would just let me know hey we're not going to be able to come anymore because our nurse almost got stuck because of her own fault because she didn't park up on dry land anyway <laughs> so they may not be coming anymore I don't know what the deal is but you would think they would let me know something because I have sat here all day anticipating that they were coming so anyway I made it down another side. That's a good thing. I hope you guys have a project and are enjoying just crocheting away with me. And a little spot of yellow and I love this. I love the way this yellow works up right here. So guys, why don't you why don't you guys tell me in the comments what is your absolutely favorite yarn? Like yarn brand or either just a certain yarn? What? Yeah, like this is really even too hot just laying on me. <laughs> oh, I have to work on this in the air conditioning. But what is your favorite yarn? Favorite brand or favorite name of yarn or just and your favorite weight of yarn? I think I might have asked that the other day. This right here, I'm pretty sure is a four weight yarn. Yeah, it's a four weight. I'm not saying that's my favorite yarn, but it does feel nice. Um, I love lots of yarns. Like, I really love Premier yarn. I love the feel of it. I love Hobby Lobby. I love this yarn. Look, I'm not a yarn snob at all. Not at all. I can use any kind of yarn um, except a fingering weight or a number one or probably even DK I don't know you know I, I don't use that tiny of a yarn normally unless I pair it with something else um, but that's the only thing and that's just that's not being a yarn snob it's just because my hands can't handle working with small yarns but um, but other than that yarn wise I I can use just about any yarn now here in Louisiana I don't um, 
we don't really use wool or I don't use wool yarn because it's just too hot. We have no need for that. Wool yarn needs to be moved up north where they have snow and they're freezing and all that kind of stuff. Like um, Laura at Mad Mimi's Crochet and Farm. She's, she's sitting there saying, it's spring. The ground is covered in snow. <laughs> Oh, and it was 20 degrees. Um, that, you know, she she probably needs wool up there. But she didn't act like it was cold. Like, she didn't act like she was freezing or anything like that. Matter of fact, she cracked the car windows because she got too hot with the heater on. They're probably used to it up there, you know. Um, and one time we took Elijah to a doctor in Cincinnati, Ohio. And it, it did, it was snow, it was snow all over the ground. Um, we did not turn on the heat in our hotel room. We turned it off. But from the heat coming from the rooms around us, it was so hot in there. We woke up in the middle of the night just sweating so bad. We had to open the windows of our hotel room. It was so hot. So it's snow on the ground, and we had the window open. And then the next day, we went to the hospital for appointments. We didn't even wear coats. Okay, I mean, we here in Louisiana, we don't really have coats, but we have jackets. And we made sure that we took um, our lightweight jackets, but we also took long sleeve shirts. And we took enough that we could layer clothes and be warm enough, you know. And this was my first time in the north during the winter. Um, we found that we did not need any of that. It, it was a dry cold and not a wet cold. Here in Louisiana, it is definitely a wet cold. And wet cold seems to be cold. But that dry cold did not affect us and so we we I think we ended up just taking our lightweight jackets around with us but we really wasn't wearing them that much and if we did we took them off when we got right inside a building but I, we, I just don't remember us really wearing them that much but sitting in the doctor's office or um, I remember one particular we were at the doctor's office um, getting registered and waiting you know and so the lady who was doing our intake she had on a turtleneck and a sweater and I was just sitting there sweating looking at her because <laughs> it was not that cold to us to us we were just not that cold it was a different kind of cold the best way I can think of to describe it is say that it was a dry cold and not a wet cold. But when we were at, when we got back to the hotel, we played out in the snow and didn't even have our jackets on because it was just um, it was very tolerable. I don't remember what the temp temperature was, but I do know that you know it was the ground was covered in snow. And along the side of the roads was just banks of snow lining the road. But the roads were clear because people had been driving on them. And they probably, oh, something's on me. <laughs> they probably um, had salted the roads or, you know, snow truck came through or something. I don't know. But the roads were drivable. Well, guys, it is getting pretty warm right here, actually, and um, bugs are on me. I just felt one on me in my neck. I don't know what it was, but something was just crawling on my neck here. There's lots of little bugs flying around. So, I may have to go inside and um, crochet in there. It is getting warm out here, and this um, yarn laying on me is warm. Phoebe's down here panting, so we need to go in and get her some water. Huh, Phoebe, you want to go get some water? 
She's looking at me like, yes, woman. <laughs> anyway, I just thought I would sit out here and chat with you guys. Not about anything of any importance, just rambling. But let's go in and I will talk to you all again later. Hey guys, I had to come in the house and cool off. It was just getting a little warm out there. Not really too warm. I think it is, um, oh, it is 83 degrees. So, yeah, it, it did get pretty warm. And I just had to come on in and cool off because I didn't want to get too hot because then it starts really affecting my health when I get hot. And so I need to try to stay cool. So I came in and turned on the AC um, in the den, and I'm sitting in the parlor. So I have a tower fan. I turned it on, and the ceiling fan is on. So, yeah, it's, it's comfortable in here. Not too hot, not cool, just right. So I'm just uh, crocheting. You can see I changed projects. That's the way I do throughout the day, is I just work on this project for a little while until I get tired of that color, or stitch, or whatever, and then I move to another project with a new color, and this project is actually um, single crochet, and I was working on a double crochet project, so let me see if I can get this, um, tell you what, since I lost that pinky, I have a time doing stitch markers and things like that. Um, I just have a time doing that. <laughs> I had to get this in my hand just right in my little lobster claw there and Try to get that in my stitch. Yeah, I really have a hard time. This is one of the hardest things for me is the stitch, getting my stitch marker in. I do have some of those little circle stitch markers that kind of loop around, but they fall out on me. And then I don't know where my last, you know, my stitch is. So I have to have something that actually loops in there. So anyway, what was I saying? Um, yeah, this project is single crochet. So um, I'm just whipping through. I'm, I'm on a section here where it's single crochet all the way around. It's not increasing. It's just staying the same. So that works for me right now. I can talk and do that at the same time. I can't talk and increase or decrease because I need to count the stitches in between those you know anyway so i'm making something with blue yarn and i'm using the premier sweet roll fruits in the colorway blueberry so i'm really um looking forward to seeing how this works up and when i get to the white section and just seeing how it plays out i'm making a plushie so it'll be a mystery what I am making for now. Um, I might have mentioned before what I was planning on making with that yarn. And so some people might could guess that. I don't know. But we'll see um, how it turns out. And um, I think it's going to be cute. Or at least I think that colorway will be cute in a plushie. So, yeah, that's what I got going on. So, for now, I'm just going to crochet on this project for a little bit. And um, I might be back later to show you another project I'm working on. <laughs> okay, guys. So, someone had asked me about this doll. They had saw it in the background of another video, so they asked me about her, and this is Cypress. You can see she um, kind of looks like a real baby, 
and she um, just sits here in our living room. I got that chair for her. That is her chair where she sits, and she just hangs out here. Um, I see her beside her sometimes. <laughs> but um, sometimes I, you know, change her clothes along with holidays or seasons, and she just sits here. Um, she is a reborn doll. She is called the June Sculpt Awake 7-Month Baby. So, she's supposed to be like a 7-month-old baby. She does wear size 12-month clothes, and sometimes those are even kind of tight on her. I believe the outfit she has on is a 12-month. That was her um, Easter outfit. And uh, just to show you her little socks and shoes here um yeah she's very pretty doll and she does look very realistic um like i said she's 10 pounds and so she's quite heavy for me to pick up and maneuver around but uh, just to give you a good close-up of her face so this is cypress Hey guys, what are y'all up to right now? I am wrapping up these yarn balls. Yesterday I had done a little video about my yarn bucket. And at the end, I just kind of stuffed the yarn in there so you could see what it looked like with the colored yarn in it. So now I'm going back to re-wrapping up my balls and adding them into my bucket. But I tell you what... I would much rather be crocheting <laughs> than wrapping up yarn balls. Um, but anyway, I'm doing it. Although I'd rather be crocheting. I have projects calling my name. Yarn balls calling my name. Everybody's just calling my name. Baby, are you calling my name too? <laughs> She's standing over here on the bench beside her bed looking at me. Probably wondering, who are you talking to, woman? <laughs> so, anyway, guys. Can you believe April is almost over? Like, we're halfway through April. Time is just flying by. Like, so fast. So, so fast. But, to be honest with you... March and April are just very hard emotional months for me. Um, when when March and April hit, I can I can tell like I'm just emotional about everything because of past history. Um, in 2016, on March the 10th, we flooded like the whole earth flooded down here in the south <laughs> um it was bad it was really bad we got out just in time like we knew there was water everywhere but um i guess we didn't realize how much water because we hadn't left our house and we were just watching videos on like facebook and um yeah it was flooding everywhere but i don't know we were in denial yeah, we were in denial that it was going to happen to us. And that water just kept coming up and coming up and coming up. Um, and it was coming from both sides, the back. And, yeah, it, it just wasn't stopping. And so we made the decision that um, we need to go. And so we went. And the next morning, um, the next day, after we got out that night, because we spent a little time getting things together and trying to get out a little bit, um, the next day, Big Daddy and the boys had to boat to our front door. The water come up overnight and just came on in like it lived here. So, 
that was very emotional time because we ended up camping. We ended up in a camper and it was very hard and very emotional. Um, we couldn't get to our house because it was flooded. Um, not only, I mean, our house was flooded, but all the roads leading to our house was flooded. The only way Big Daddy could get to our house was to go down the highway past our house and put a boat in on the side of the road and boat back up in here. It was really deep, very scary, alligators, snakes everywhere. It was a crazy, crazy time for sure. But anyway, somehow or another, we survived it with the Lord. The Lord is what got us through it. But I swear, me and Jody aged 10 years during that time. We both did. It was really hard on us. And um, then we had to rebuild our house. We had to strip this house down to the studs and rebuild. Like this is very the end, the bathroom. That's one end of our house. All the way through is my bedroom, mine and Big Daddy's bedroom. That's the other end of the house. You could see from in here all the way down because there were no walls, just studs. So my boys had to rebuild this house because. We couldn't afford to pay anyone. We didn't have flood insurance because we live in a flood zone. So we can't get insurance here. Um, so we, we had help about three days, three times. And that was all. The rest was my boys. They, they are the ones who rebuilt this house. We did have some people who helped us get started. Um, and like I said, they came out about three times. Exactly. They came three times. <laughs> and then it was my boys. And we worked on this house, or they worked on this house. I couldn't really do anything except supervise and tell them what I wanted. But they got it done. It was a very hard time for us. It took us um, that we flooded in March. I don't think we got... I don't think we was able to get in our house, um, back to our house, until sometime in April. Well, maybe even closer to May before we could ever get back into the house. I'm, I'm going on different events that happened in April um, that I know we were still out of the house. But anyway, once we got was able to come back to the house... Uh, and we got it, we got all the walls down and got, got it cleaned out. I came back, I started staying here. I didn't go back camping. Um, the boys and Jody, they continued to go back to the campground and stay. But me and Phoebe, no, I didn't have Phoebe then. I had Sophia, me and Sophia, we stayed here. And just slept in the shell of a house. Um, you know, we didn't have appliances. We didn't have anything. Nothing. But we made it. We made it. You know, by the grace of God, I could not have ma made it through that time without the Lord being here with me. And just getting me through that. Because it was really bad. It was really hard on us. So, to backtrack on that just a little bit. Um... Our house, we flooded on March the 10th, and we left out that night with no return. You know, we couldn't come back to our house because of the um, flooding, the water. You couldn't drive down here. You could only boat. Anyway, um, just a few days later, maybe like on the 15th or so, about five days later after... Our house flooded. Jody's brother passed away unexpectedly. We did not expect that. Um, now, he did have some health issues, but he was doing good. He um, had got in his truck and was going to dialysis. 
and he never got his truck cranked. He died right there, um, right in front of his home, trying to, you know, go to dialysis that morning. And he drove himself and on to dialysis, but um, he passed away right there. So that was a shocker phone call early that morning to say that um, Scotty passed away. And then uh, that same day that Scotty passed away, Big Daddy's mom was in Shreveport for some tests and she was diagnosed with cancer that day. So that was hard, and they had to tell her that day that Scotty passed away. So I didn't go to with them that night to go and tell her that Scotty passed away. I just I just could not do that. Me and Elijah stayed at the campground, and Jody and Dakota went with Jody's other brothers. Um. They all went and told her, you know, that Scotty passed away. Oh, I mean, I'm sure it was super sad. That's why I just couldn't handle it. I had enough, I had enough sadness going on, and I was sitting at the campground crying anyway. So, um, <laughs> but then um, that was in March. Okay, and then in April, Jody's mom passed away. Actually. Today would have been her birthday, and instead of her birthday that year, we was having her funeral. So that was really hard on us too, losing memo. So March and April are just stressful times, <laughs> and actually that whole summer after our house flooded, um, my kids were building a house. That's what they did. I, I don't know what we would have done without them boys. They are very dependable children. And they worked very hard rebuilding our house. So, yep, that, that's on my mind today because, you know, I, I knew it was my mom's birthday. Now, my mom's birthday was the 13th of this month, and that was very stressful and hard on me, too, because um, things are difficult. So, yeah, it's just a stressful time. Very emotional. I'm trying to get through it. <laughs> uh, yep. Yeah. Yeah, yesterday I just dumped these in here just to show some color, but today I'm going back and, you know, fixing my balls, getting them all prettied up. See, that does look pretty, doesn't it? Yes, I love those crochet stickers on there. And I love how that looks. This is a tangled up mess because when I was in there doing stuff, the cats were in this box trying to get out, get them some toys, <laughs> and I do crochet them toys. I crochet them little balls or just little tubes, and um, they play with those until they lose them under furniture. Then I make them some more, and actually they have a little pile of toys over by their cat tree, and they, they, they love those toys. They get them out, strew them all over the house, play with them, and then whenever I um, tidy up at night, I do a little house tidy before I go to bed. I'll collect all the little cat toys and throw them back over in the corner. But these cats love their toys. <laughs> and Phoebe loves her toys, too. She plays and plays with her toys. So... Anyway, yeah, this is going better than I thought it was. Like, I'm almost, well, not really almost through, but it's went a lot faster than I thought. Probably because I have you guys to visit with. So, thank you for visiting with me. 
while well, I'm putting all my little scrap balls. I use these balls when I do um, little amigurumis or if I'm doing a project and it just needs um, a little face or, you know, some little something accessory that goes with the project. These little scrap balls are coming very handy for that. Because it's little balls. It's not big enough to do a project, but it's enough to do a little something. Now, if it's just a strand of yarn, I'm not saving it because I don't, I'm not in the, I'm not a hoarder. I don't collect trash and I don't use yarn for stuffing because that's not the proper way to stuff stuff and it look good. So if it's super tiny little strips, I do throw them away and I have no guilt about that whatsoever. Um, but if it's big enough that I can use it for, um, you know, little accessories or faces or different things that might go on amigurumi, I definitely ball it up and stick it over here. Let's see what I got here. I have a feeling I'm unwinding a ball from the other end <laughs> on that one. And some of these, I'm just not going to fight it. If it doesn't come out, I'm going to clip it. <clears throat> clip it, wind it up, and throw away whatever mess is left. Yeah, I, I'm not a hoarder. I'm not going to collect trash. Such as little, you know, strands of yarn that aren't big enough to do anything with. So if it's not big enough to make a little ball, bye-bye. See, I got this mess right here going on now. That is from one of those um, Ogos, little horn things. So I might ball that up in a minute. But anyway, I hope you've all been having a great weekend. I think on Sundays, I'm just going to start doing a crocheting chat. And it might be clips from several days put together or whatever. Just depending on what I have, you know, going on my life <laughs> or with big daddy today um he is just rested today he's sitting in there in the den on the love seat watching um movies i guess i don't always watch him um <laughs> i can't watch tv with him because he doesn't leave it on a channel long enough to watch anything he changes from movie to movie or show to show or whatever and by the time you like kind of start getting interested in something he changes it to something else so we can't watch TV together I'll be done killed him <laughs> he grew up without TV um, his mom would not let them have TV and so he's been trying to make up for it for 32 years that I've been married to him he's been trying to make up for his lost TV time <laughs> he was raised Pentecost so um, no TV in their home his dad would bring a TV home sometimes and his mom would either smash it with a hammer or cut the cord with scissors and you know they fought about that a lot now, I did grow up without TV somewhat, too. I was raised Assembly of God, and um, we didn't have TV. And we had a living room that we did not use. It was a big living room with big um, French doors. It was off from the dining room, and we were not allowed to go in that room, actually. And so... We had a small den that, you know, like we hung out in or if 
company come over, we we could go in the living room and sit with company, but um, mostly we didn't go in there. I mean, I mean, us kids weren't allowed in there unless we had company and our fam. You know, we was in there with family, but it wasn't like a hangout room or anything. And so I remember this clearly. One day after school, my sister and I were there. We were home alone. We were by ourselves. And I was drinking a glass of chocolate milk. I mean, I remember this clearly. And I, I don't know, we were just goofing off. And I leaned on those French doors and they came open. And so I was scrounging to close them real quick. And I saw a humongous console TV. Like one of those big I don't know, I want to say a 25 inch, but I don't know, back in that day, it was that big console TV with the wood frame around it that sat on the floor, I'm sure you guys know what I'm talking about, there was one sitting in our living room, and I was like, oh, we have a TV, and my sister said, we do not, and <laughs> she didn't believe me, and I was like, there's a TV in here, and so, she came and looked, and we were just like, what? We have a TV? I mean, we didn't know we had a TV. <laughs> Isn't that crazy that there's a TV in your house, and your kids don't even know it? So, I think my mom didn't want the TV, and my father had got it. And um, he would go in there at night and watch TV after everyone had gone to bed and so um, even after we discovered the TV and we had you know fessed up that we knew we had a TV because we were excited about that and um we still didn't get to watch it <laughs> we still didn't get to watch the TV that was that's funny eventually um, we did start getting to watch TV but not in my early years. And I was in second grade then. I remember because of the house where we lived. I was in second grade. And then we built a house after that. Out in the country. When I was in third grade. We, we moved um, out into the country. And built a house out there. And then I, we did get to watch TV once we lived in that house. Because the living room did not have, um, you know, doors that closed it off in that house. And so the TV was just there. We did get to watch TV once we moved. It's crazy. <laughs> but seriously, when I was a little girl, um, I mostly wore dresses. Couldn't wear shorts or pants. Um, until probably about the second grade before then I just wore dresses and even after that it was dresses a lot and that's probably why I despise dresses today I just because I was forced to wear them as a kid and like even after I did get to start wearing pants um, dresses were still kind of forced you know so I despise dresses today. <laughs> I wear pants all the time, every day. If I go somewhere, I most likely have on a pair of black pants. Today I have on pajama pants, but <laughs> anyway. Well, guys, I have kept y'all and just chatted about nothing for like a long time. Um... Uh, yeah, I was thinking on Sundays, I'm probably just going to do a crochet and chat. And it might be clips from multiple days when I just feel a little chatty. And want to chat with you guys while I'm working on something. So, um, my hand's cramping up. So, that's probably what I'm going to do. And, you know, if you enjoy these type of videos, I invite you to watch. And if you don't, you know, pass it by. No big deal. But here's what my yarn ball container is looking like. And I love it. I love that. I love these stickers that Hattie made. 
um, I did look on her website, on her website, on her Etsy page, and she had a few new ones. And so I uh, click, click, click. <laughs> I went click, 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 and got a couple more to fill in a few of these spaces. Um, and then I'm just gonna keep an eye out, and as she does more stickers, because I know she will, she'll get new ideas and put more stickers out. And I'll go click, 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 and. <laughs> Because they're cheap, you know, they're like a dollar fifty, two dollars. Um, I think her most expensive one is three dollars, and I probably already have the three dollar one. I don't know, but um, uh, I just I love supporting small businesses for one, and I love that she is Ella's sister, too, <laughs> and um. You know, I know Ella and her sister are close and have a great relationship, and um, I'm just happy that Hattie has found a way to, you know, supplement her income, because, you know, we all need to do that at times, and I'm sure she enjoys doing it, or she wouldn't be doing it, and so I'm happy to support a small business. I love doing that. I love supporting you know, little mom and pop shops rather than go into, you know, the big, big super stores. I mean, I do shop at super stores. Don't get me wrong. But if I had an option of this project product from a mom and pop shop or a super store, I would pick the super store. I mean, I would pick the mom and pop. Excuse me. Y'all know what I'm trying to say. Right now, we're at a time here, and I'm sure every, every, I'm sure this is the way it is everywhere. You know, the pandemic brought on so much online shopping that we are just losing brick and mortar stores. All you know, every day there's just stores shutting down. We have so many empty stores, buildings. That have shut down since the pandemic and that is so sad but also scary because that was someone's job you know that place of employment um you know employed people and so now they have to you know try to find jobs elsewhere and it, it's it's a little sad so if I have, <coughs> excuse me, if I have a choice of purchasing online or purchasing in town, if I know I'm going to be able to go to town to get it, by the, you know, like if I need the project product immediately, I'm going to try to go to town to get it. But if I don't need it for, say, a week or so, and I know I'm not going to be able to go to town, I will order it. But I would rather buy it in person at a you know real walk-in store for that purpose just because you now some people are homebound and they don't have a choice but to shop online and i totally understand that um because i'm at that point sometimes too where i know i'm not going to get to go to town so i have to um, order it online but it makes me sad that i can't go every time to a store and walk in and get it now some some things i use are not sold in stores around here so i do have to order those types of items online but um yeah i don't know how i got off on that <laughs> i don't know how i got off on that guys so this is what i have left and you know what it's trash and don't try to make me feel guilty about that because it's not going to work. <laughs> I'm going to see what I can pull out of it. But yeah, um, I'm ready to get back to crocheting instead of winding on some yarn because my hand's cramping anyway. And I'm not going to sit here for hours working to untangle little bitty scraps of yarn. I did want to save this color here if I could. So I'm just checking here to see what. Yep, I can save that little piece. This can be wound up. 
what else? Oh, this flower could be put together and actually used. <laughs> There's a couple more little flowers that I had just made and stuck in there for I don't know why. This little black can be saved. I think this can be saved. This is just a little hot mess. So it is going in the garbage and this little scrap right here is trash. That is not stuffing by any means. <laughs> when I stuff my projects, like you're probably thinking that could go in a stuffy, but it can't. It can't. Not the way I stuff mine. Um, so, it is trash. I have a little trash can right here by my desk. So I'm almost done. And I think it looks really good. Well, guys, thank you for keeping me company. Um, I'm looking forward to this next week. I have my videos planned out. So come back. Join me. Let's hang out some more. Visit. Come see what I'm up to. And um, yeah. See you all later. Bye, friends.